finally got a writing desk. Okay, not to be all clickbaity, but it's not what you think. It's not a new physical, you know, physical desk that I brought in and I'm using. It's space that I'm taking of a table that was already always there, kitchen table. So let me just go ahead and give you a little backstory. Uh, first of all, my name is Cassandra Xavier. I'm also known as Amethyst Ra, Amrita Goddess. I mean, Amethyst Ra, Amrita Waterfalls, <laughs> and Endowed Goddess. And um, so I consider myself a multimedia healing artist. I have bipolar disorder, and I also have the PTSDs. And I have a very, very sexy thing called binge eating disorder. It's hot. Everybody, everybody should like at one time in their lives date somebody who has that. So anyway, clearly I'm uh, being a little sarcastic, which shows a little healing I need to do around this particular issue. If you're wondering what this white stuff is in my hair, it's baking soda. At some point, I'm going to have it thoroughly washed out. I have tried. This has been like sh several shampoos have happened since I put this stuff in my hair, and it's still not really coming out. I'm pretty sure a salon expert can have a solution for that, but I don't know what to do in the meantime. Except explaining it every gosh darn time I'm in the sunlight and I feel self-conscious about the situation, but I'm digressing. Okay, so I've had this, this problem that I've been lamenting over for over a year, which is that I need a desk to write on, and I even um, wrote an article about it called uh, a, a Desk of Her Own, I think. Um, you know, based on the, the story, uh, A Room of One's Own, from the gr late, great um, Virginia Woolf. So A Desk of One's Own is about my long challenge, my longtime challenge of finding a place to write. So I've been living with a friend, staying with a friend for two years. Um, it's this guy that I used to date. And his 22-year-old daughter, who lives here, she's a student and works full-time. So, um, so I stay in his room. Then they have a kitchen and a living family living room. And one bathroom on the second floor. Three bedrooms upstairs. He has one, which I share with him and she has two it's not the second room is not used as a bedroom the room the second room that she uses is not used as a bedroom but <laughs> I've never before lived first of all I've never lived with a partner and their child it's a dream in the way I never thought it would look like this and I just certainly am open to co-parenting in the future this situation was far from ideal in various ways um uh, in that she really didn't want me there. But that's a different story. And now I can understand. I mean, she's way better about it now. You know, and I think she's accepted it, I guess. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> and I guess maybe it helps that she knows I'm not trying to take over the house. I'm not trying to, you know, marry him. And I'm not trying to like, you know, you know, I, I, I give her a lot of space and stuff. So, but I have really not liked it for a long time that um, there are three rooms here. I don't have one and she has two. And there's a desk in there, and um, the room was so messy before. She's now starting to clean it up, um, and she wants to turn it into a room for her school studies. So that room is not available to me. I finally mustered up the gumption to ask if I could use the desk when she's not around, and she says she's working on it. She wants that to be the room where she has all the stuff that she used for her studies. And I'm not saying what her major is, because I want to be a little confidential. So... So I did everything I could, like over the past, you know, the, in the time that I've been here, I've tried to create a desk space and writing space in three areas of the bedroom. I tried three different areas of the bedroom. Didn't work. Um, my nesting partner smokes, so I kind of didn't want to make it downstairs, also down where he smokes. And I also didn't want to be downstairs because I thought it was a public area and to write, I need privacy. Um... So it's common area is what I mean. Um, so I didn't, uh, you know, I just, I just lost hope. And I just would try to use libraries, but sometimes that's not so easy to do. Being somebody who oftentimes is depressed and just kind of, and I'm also very homey, cancer rising sign. 
I'm Aquarius, Sun, Libra, Moon, Cancer, Rising. Very homey, very much of a nester. And so I'm, I, that's why I, I kind of write a column called Domestic Bliss, because <laughs> I love domestic stuff. <laughs> I literally, you know, got up at six in the morning and made muffins. <laughs> Who does that? I do. So, and it's not mania. That's not mania. I was getting up anyway, and it was something to, I wanted, you know, he was out of muffins. Anyway, we should all be so lucky to have a gal at home with a beard making muffins for us. That when we get home, there's a gal with a beard at home with muffins for us. So, anyway. So the beard says hi, and I say hi too. Oh my god. I just literally had a physiological response. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because children might be watching. But I just literally am having some physiological responses to uh, tugging at my beard here. Physiological Anyway, so today I just realized looking at the kitchen table, you know, I had this kind of like mindset of like, there has got, and whenever I have manifested anything in my life, it's always been prefaced by either the thought I'm willing to receive. Most often it's come from the thought, there has got to be, you know? So I was like looking at the kitchen table and thinking, what can I do? Like, I need to be able to write in this house. There has got to be something I can do. So I was looking at the kitchen table, the various sides of it. Finally, the thought that had never occurred to me before, because I even also tried to make a writing desk of the kitchen table. But my, I would sit, there were two chairs set up. And I would sit, at, not at the one where he sits, but where, where the other seat. So I tried to, I made space on the table where he has his stuff and his clutters, his clutterings. <laughs> and so I, I cleared it. And like literally within seconds, he wasn't even home. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Just like whoosh, more objects, stuff, papers, mail, junk, like immediately. Like it was like, nope, you ain't fixing to clear us. We don't think so, madam. And so... I just thought, okay, well, clearly I can't work on this table because this is this object of him. This is his thing. It's his jam. He's going to keep it the way he was. But then, you know what I saw today? My eyeball sockets were opened in a new way. And I, what I saw, you know what area is always clear? His little side, where he sits, where he sits to drink, to eat, to smoke, to watch the family guy on his tablet, to watch John Oliver or what is his name? Oliver Roberts, whatever the comedian with the British accent is. Um, that's, I was like, that's it. I'm going to sit where he sits. That's my writing desk where my nesting partner sits at the table when he's not at home, when he's asleep. Uh, so there's no cigarette smoke around. That's it. And I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Now having PTSD, I don't like the fact that the it's my back would be facing all the activity, the front door, everybody coming in. So that triggers my PTSD, but I'm really excited. It only took over two years, <laughs> but I wanted to share that. So for you, the lesson or the thought is if there's something you really, 